Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I would like to share with you all my final thoughts on the QSP Knives Canary. This is the folder, don't get it confused with the fixed blade. Uh, this is actually a little bit larger than the fixed blade. I don't have the fixed blade in person, but I have seen pictures of them side to side. And the folder is, yeah, it makes the fixed blade look even tinier than it actually is advertised to be. Um, I did purchase this off of Amazon. The current price, at least during the recording of the video, $41.95, very well-deserved price. I like it. I definitely do enjoy it at that price. I got nothing against that. There are 20 different colorways, which is insane. Um, mainly the actual scale colors. This is just the regular white. Um, I do plan to keep this in the collection because it's actually a pretty sweet little knife and I'm gonna dye it teal. Well, who would have guessed? Um, and there are stonewash variations. So the only difference would be just stonewash blade, uh, liners, clip, hardware. So if you don't like black, there's that for you, which is awesome that they offer that many different variations. QSP is a company that is at the point where they're able to just pump out just buttloads of um, different variations, different colorways. That's just something they do. They cater to the people who like color, which is awesome. I really do enjoy that. They are a vital part of the community because while I do love all titanium and metal and the monochrome look and just black and silver... I like color in my collection too. If if I were to go through and show you guys all the stuff that I have, it I mean, nothing really you know matches with you know what's right next to it. Um, it's I have a very varying collection, but majority of it is utilitarian based. I don't really have a lot of like safe queens or anything fancy like that. I have nice stuff. I have cheap stuff. This is one of my cheap ones. It's gonna stay. I like it. It's good. So. Again, price forty one ninety five. Twenty different variations. QSB made in China. Um, let's do the weight on this. We'll do my typical size comparisons, and then we'll get into the up close and review. This is gonna be very short because I don't really have anything bad to say about this thing, and I know I could be very critical even at, in this price point. Two point seven. <laughs> nothing to complain about um there is a butt ton of weight relief as you can see because there are holes all throughout this thing and some people don't like the whole look and unfortunately that's kind of the scale design that they went with all 20 of their variations so that's it is just it is what it is um you have flat g10 scales nice and contoured all the way around and even the holes are chamfered everything is very well finished this is the blade here. See it nice and up close. I have not put an edge on this yet. Um, I've had a lot of stuff coming in for unboxing and just use, and this thing just kind of got overshadowed by their stuff. I have carried it a lot. That's why it looks a little dingy, a little grimy, but it is white. I mean, you look at it and it just gets dirty. Um, but I chose it for the reason of you know dying it eventually. Um, and I do like black and teal. I think it's a nice combination. Blade material on this is 14C28N, which is wonderful. Uh, I don't think I've actually had any of QSP's 14C, so I can't really talk about like the heat treat and you know if it feels really soft or really hard. Um, I'll be able to talk more about that when I actually sharpen it, but. At this price point, for what I'm spending, for how long the company's been around, I got no reason to really question it. So I'm calling it good. Let's do some size comparisons. And I'm missing one of my size comparison knives because it's currently disassembled and I have no idea when I'm going to get it back together because there's stuff that I got to do to it that uh, takes time. So and that is something I don't have often. So here we have a behemoth in comparison. This is the Wii Praxis. Here is the full-size Doug Ritter RSK, and as you can see, they absolutely dwarf this thing, right? Do a couple other ones, let's do some Spydercos. We got the beautiful PM2. Native 5. 
a little bit more, you know, smaller like the Native 5, but the Native 5 is still bigger. So, yeah, this is a very compact knife. Um, I'm hoping, and you, you're not going to hear this from me often, I'm hoping that they actually make an XL version of this because this is a wonderful silhouette and overall shape that I think could be even more appreciated if it was a larger. I'm not talking about a four inch blade. I'm just talking about something that's like 3.75 or close to there, but just something a little bit bigger. Um, as long as it's, you know, still around, you know, a hundred bucks or something like that. And if they want to go and add like crazy cool materials and make a special edition, that's up to them, of course. Um, last comparison, ECVV Vision FG. Do I have anything that's like closer in size? It's kind of a common knife. Not, not really. Uh, no, I don't. I don't really have anything. This is a small. This is a small knife. It has very compact design. Um, this is probably one of the smallest knives in my collection, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I prefer something around the size and maybe just a hair uh, larger overall. But really, I don't have too many complaints about it. This does have a ceramic detent ball, inset steel liners, of course. The lockup on this thing was a little funky in the beginning. There was some horrible lock stick. Took it apart, cleaned it, it went away immediately. After the first week of having it, um, I noticed that I was having some up and down blade rock. Um, that is, you know, in this direction, up and down. Side to side, I mean, it's always been solid, always been great. Um, I really got a yank on it. There's, there's essentially no movement in the pivot, which is nice. That is a um, you know tolerance thing, and they do that very well, even on their budget line. So that's that's awesome. Um, but I did develop a little bit of up and down play. I didn't like that. I spine whacked it a little bit to see if maybe the liner lock would fail. It didn't, which is awesome. So the lock based geometry in correlation to the face of the lock itself, it's excellent. What I did was I disassembled it, bent the liner in just a little bit. I had more lock stick for maybe a day or so. I just kept cleaning off a little contact point right there. And eventually it worked itself out. Now it's super freaking smooth and there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a very lightweight blade, so it's not gonna be something that's like, it's a guillotine which is gonna come crashing down on your finger. Um, it's light, it's a very light blade. But where your thumb lands and where the sharpening troil right there and the plunge band and everything, it does kind of knock into your thumb. You can avoid that, of course, you know, by just disengaging, putting the blade, putting the detent ball on the face of the blade and just closing it like that. One of these little, those little moves right there. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Something like that. So you can avoid getting your, you know, your nail all nicked up and chewed up and all ugly looking. But uh, yeah, that's, that's about it when it comes to the lockup. It's excellent, zero play in any direction, which is wonderful. Um, already talked about the action, it's very smooth. There are ceramic bearings in there and I believe they were phosphor bronze caged. Could be, possibly, I can't remember if I take it apart, but I know the ceramic, which is cool. It's nice, I appreciate it at this price point. Um, the QSP logo, this is one of their cheapest, most boring logos. They have many other different ones, um, but it's well-deserved on a model like this because this is a budget knife, right? You have T8 for the pivot, T6 for the body screws. You have two there. You got a filler tab here, which is awesome. So this is a friendly, a lefty friendly design. Um, you have plenty of room for uh, going in and out of your pocket. And it's excellent, nice and smooth, doesn't get snagged on anything. There's nothing down, you know, beneath that clip for it to get, you know, caught up on or anything. The centering is essentially perfect as it came out of the box. And after disassembling twice already at this point, uh, maybe even a third time. And it's just, this is a very, very simple design, very easy to take apart and clean, do basic maintenance. Um, I don't see why sharpening would be uh, any different than you know, everything else that this thing is, uh, has shown me at this point. Yeah, this is a highly, highly recommendable knife. And even for like the lanyard people, if you want to, you know, throw a giant 
uh, comical lanyard on a really small knife. You can do that if you want to, which is cool. Uh, it's cool. You can see the, the, the actual edge of the holes, just that one right there. But, um, I noticed that on like the, the Vision FG, it also has holes. I'm not a huge fan of holes through the handles. I only have maybe two or three knives that are like that, just being two of them. Um, but like this, you can kind of see like the Damascus sand my pattern a little bit, not much, just a little, little funny thing. That was it. But that is, that's pretty much it. I know this is kind of a boring review, but there really wasn't anything to, you know, really highlight or to crap on. It's an excellent knife produced by an excellent company. It's highly recommendable. There are a crap ton of different uh, color variations. So there's gotta be one for you. Uh, if you got the extra scratch, this would be an awesome little stocking stuffer knife. Um, the detent is is perfect for being such a light, compact knife. Um, it's not super heavy. It's not ridiculously light. You can't like you know shake it out or like whip it out. You can if you like really do that, but you're probably gonna go flying across the room. Um, very easy to you know. Oh, as I as I fail, uh, you can of course thumb flick it and reverse flick it with the meat of your. Uh, middle finger or even getting your nail underneath it um, it flicks really freaking hard and uh but you know i i believe that that stop pin right there is going to hold up well enough so again a light blade moving pretty fast but it's a very simple simple design there are very few moving parts to this that could possibly fail very straightforward simple design it's just uh the way that it's shaped how it feels in hand I have large to extra large size hands, but slim fingers, so I get a pretty good grip on this thing, and this has actually seen a good bit of pocket time, and I've taken it to work, and this is pretty straightforward and easy to use. I like that the tip comes down pretty low, almost, you know, in the middle right there, um, but I can get to it pretty well, to doing like little, like, dragging cuts or, you know, cutting plastic, cardboard, little things like that. And um, this is going to be a very easy knife to pass through a lot of thick material because there's no like weird swedges. You have this one here at the top, uh, but it's, it's really just decorative, but there's nothing to get in the way or caught up. The actual studs, they're essentially not in the path of the cutting edge. So you don't really got to worry about that, which is nice. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys like this review, go ahead and leave it a like down below. I will be linking this down uh, go ahead and pick one up. It's, it's relatively inexpensive for what it is. It's a great build and I definitely like it for sure. Um, if you are subscribed, thank you so much. I appreciate all your support and your patience. Of course, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing because I have plenty more videos and content coming you guys this way. And with that being said, have a wonderful rest of your day.